Voices from the Mausoleum is brought to you by the You Run Podcast Network and yourunpodcast.com. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Voices from the Mausoleum, and welcome to an episode of Five Influential Horror Movies, a series where all kinds of horror fans come on the channel and talk about their five most influential horror movies and why they picked them. Um, as of recent, Joe is not a stranger to the channel. You would have been if we had done this like six months ago. <laughs> I was like sitting there in my head going, do I need to be introduced anymore? At this point, we've been on each other's like the last month so much. Do we even need so to much? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know it's awesome. Hey, it's a good relationship that has come out of, like I said, I know I mentioned it. I am not quite buzz enough, so I'm not repeating it, but I know we started out rocky and I'm glad how, you know, things have turned out and. You know, and I and I, you, you had already had everybody else. Did you? Because like you were the only one. Well, I haven't had Lexi for her influential. Not yet. Not yet. But she had appeared on your channel. She had, yeah. Yeah. So I was like literally the last one. The now all of a sudden, I, I'm like all the way in now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So Joe, the psychologist from Horror Fiend TV, on the off chance you don't know who he is, is here to talk his influential horror. Um. As always, where to find him and Horror Fiend will be in the description for this episode, so you can go follow them and subscribe if you're not already. Um. But yeah, so I was looking at your list, and I think three of the five have not actually been on this show before, so I don't think anyway. I know one for sure <laughs> is not going to mm. appear again after I mention it, so. No, I think only the first two have been on here before, but I can't remember, so that's okay. Um, but yeah, so the first one we're jumping into is Gremlins. Look how cute he is behind you over on that <laughs> side of your head. And I actually, where is he? Oh, no, he is. He's back there. Spike is behind me. Oh, I see him. <laughs> He's misbehaving. So, you know, you keep him in the corner like baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, But yeah, so um, with Gremlins, you know, you, and you know, if I come on a show, I always come in with knowing my information because I'm just that <laughs> yeah. a person. Yes. Uh, the movie is directed by Joe Dante, uh, written by Christopher Columbus, who anybody with a Harry Potter movie knows who that guy is. Mm. And I think he pretty much directed and writ written the last couple ones, I want to say. Yeah. Um, Zach Galligan as Billy and Phoebe Kate as Kate. So, um, you know, when you asked me to come up with the list, um, yeah. like we, you, right before we signed on, you say everybody wants to go with the favorite. I needed to, I put thought into this you know yeah. reasoning why and gremlins was the first movie the first horror movie i saw in a movie theater because i was 12 when this came out yeah so okay. my yeah my family like <laughs> my mom and my dad and the aunt and uncles want to get rid of us kids and they heard <laughs> of this movie and bought me this cute little thing you know <laughs> and we did have a couple of cousins that were over 18 so we got dropped off at the theater to see this movie that we thought was going to be about a cute little thing that turns into <laughs> these monsters. You know, as you grow older, it it has more comedic to it. Um, oh. I I still find there, you know, for me the the scene when they're um behind the um the, the movie screen, the movie and screen. they're all jumping up over each other and they start tearing into. I mean, even now, I, that's one of a frightening scene. Yeah. It was frightening to see it in the theater because you're seeing it in the theater. Oh, yeah. Watching and it happen in a theater. Yes. Yeah. And mind you, so I was 12. So JR was nine because he came to the movies also. And P Rock, my other brother who's appeared on the show, he was six. So oh we God. all got, yeah, all of us little kids got dropped off to see this movie. And it is one of two movies that holds the distinction of always being watched on Halloween and during uh. Christmas. Not many horror movies have that distinction, you know, because it yeah. is a Christmas themed. However, it's a horror yeah. movie, so you're going to watch it during Halloween. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's why that's why I'm starting off with that one because um, yeah. it was the first first horror movie I saw, and, and got the enjoyment of seeing that in the movie theater 
That's cool. I love that. I love the Gremlins. I don't remember when I saw it for the first time, but two Christmases ago, almost two Christmases ago, not last Christmas, but the Christmas before, I introduced my son, who at the time was four, introduced it to him because by that point he had seen like shark movies. And so I thought eh, it might be okay. He, when I tell you he's obsessed, I had to buy both of them digitally. Nice. Now, and I will, I will say talking about, you mentioned that, that the first one definitely has like that, especially that one moment. But I think the first one in general is a little more scary, whereas the second one is very silly, like very silly. And so he definitely prefers the second one because they turn into all those other things and it's just more, you know, more fun, but he loves the gremlins. I think it's, it's great introductory horror. Cause it's like, just very like um, it's it's got some things going on. It's obviously creatures and monsters, and they're doing bad things. And there's like a dark, that random dark moment about the Santa Claus getting stuck in the chimney and all that. But other than that, it's 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 relatively, you know, lighthearted. It is. Well, I actually like the second one also. I love the and second one. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm a fan. Obviously, you know, I I could probably dress up like him of these smart. Um, a gremlin i like the way he talked you know like just the his like very direct way and comedic way of talking my brothers used to say i was the crazy one with the crazy eyes <laughs> you know and i've had friends also say that too so i mean the, i love both of them um what i liked that they i think they realized the santa claus story was dark that she then tells a similar story about she the fourth of, of july <laughs> And, you know, she had like, you're like sitting there like, oh, God, don't do any holidays with this girl. <laughs> like, no. And she did. picks like an off the wall holiday, like President's Day or something. Or she's like, oh, yet? don't even get me started on President's Day. <laughs> He's like, we really don't have time for this. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought it was great because, you know, it is when, when you listen to that story, it is kind of a sad story. It is. Know? And it comes out of nowhere. Yeah. And then, then she's got to deal with, you know, her the, the bar full of a bunch of gremlins after that. So... <laughs> She That's was pretty traumatized for her Christmas, but yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, it's a, like I said, I was a kid, so for any kid, it's a great introductory one, you know, they're going to be yeah. afraid, you know, it helps that Gizmo is cute, so that way, you know, yeah, when you're there's... all scared, yeah, Gizmo pops in and you're like, okay, it's not so bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's true, that's a great one. Um, That one has been on here at least one other time for sure that I can remember. Not as popular as I feel like it should be, but it's been on here one other time, I think, at least. Um, but your second one is The Exorcist. <laughs> yes. And well, of course, I mean, I this this one, it, I read the book before I saw oh. the movie. Okay. So I actually had, was familiar with the story. Yeah. And then you see the movie Mm -hmm. And um, it was pretty close to the book. The book I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, the book was. I mean, it, it's almost always the book is always better. Yeah. Um, however, <laughs> and this goes with like for me, the one reason I love to reread Misery is that <laughs> when you see a movie that is wonderfully cast, everybody's yeah. perfect, and you go read the book again. We all, when we read, imagine what these people look like based on the description given to us yeah. by the author. Yeah. You have good, like, mental. So when you reread this book with, yeah. you know, Linda Blair, Ellen Burstyn, um, Max von Sydow, mm -hmm. literally it, it elevates the book. Trust me, if you never read Misery yeah. and you've seen the movie Misery and you yeah. pick up the book Misery, you will appreciate the shit out of that book because you're, especially with Annie Wilkes. I know we're not yeah. talking about that one. Just say that was another one that was almost going to be on here. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. No, I've so, never read the Exorcist book. I, I don't even know if I knew that. I don't even know if I knew it was a book. So, so, but the movie itself, um, it, we've seen a lot of uh, movies dealing with exorcisms. Yeah. It's still the top, one of the best exorcism movies. Um, a lot have tried to mimic it, you know, Unfortunately, uh, they go so CGI strong that that is why the practical effects yeah. of The Exorcist still hold up. They do. You know, I mean, when, when they show her going down backward down that stairs, I mean, I had, um, actually, I have the director's cut, which had a couple extra scenes, and they, mm -hmm. they have started putting them 
um, I want to say, I think I saw it on AMC, but uh, there was one where the devil appears in the background, which mm -hmm. wasn't in the original cut. And oh. they put this one in there. So there's a lot. If, if you see the director's cut or extended cuts, there's a lot more stuff that's put in there. Oh, okay. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's so like when you, especially I know a whole lot about this movie. Um, you know, I, I like little things that I had learned along the way. Like yeah. Chris, when Chris McNeil gets slapped by Reagan and you see her fly, William Friedkin told the stunt person, I need you to hit her and I need you to hit her hard. Yeah. And I need you to do it when she's not expecting it so I can get the actual reaction. When you see her land that hard hit that that was real. Jeez. That was real. Um the other reason for this movie um you know one of the shows that I had done on our channel the psychologist is in was mm -hmm. uh when I was going to school for getting my degree in psychology oh, yeah. one of the professors had said, all right, this is the paper I want you guys to write. I want you to watch the movie The Exorcist, and I want you to let me know, first of all, all the psychological procedures that were done to Reagan, and whether or not you thought this was um, real, basically, you know, because the whole the devil and all that or not. Mm -hmm. I replied and go, I just want to make sure that I understand the assignment. You want me to watch The Exorcist and write about The Exorcist and tell you all that? Am I clear on this? Like, again, <laughs> all right, you're. It's coming your way. I ended up getting an A on the paper, you know. Um, and it just helped. It, it, it's the one that helped you, especially with you have so much elevated horror. Yeah, that it was the way that the professor had us look at a movie that deals with psychological part and having the horror parts where you can say was this really all horror or was it all psychological which of course you know the exorcist the devil was, was all in it that was all horror whereas we've seen some exorcist movies that have dealt more with the psychological oh, yeah. part yes so it, 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 that's why this is on here um you know besides the fact that when i first saw this movie it terrified the living fuck out of me it's scary you know it's one Still. that watch every year at least if i'm Channel surfing happened to be at somebody's house who's got Gable and I'm flipping and it's on. I'll put it on. You know, yeah. I don't care what point it's on. I will sit there yeah. and watch it. Um, definitely. I so this day still don't recommend watching it in the complete dark. It's not, it's, it's definitely, it's, it's like, very have, scary. Yeah. Have a couple of lamps, you know, hallway light on some, some light because watching this movie in the dark is very, very, very frightening. Yeah, no, I agree. I I know I saw it when I was pretty young, but it's one of few movies that like even now, like when I think there are certain scenes in this, even now that when I think about them, I'm like, oh, like they get to me like there's like the the stair scene is one of them. The other one is the cross scene. Uh -huh. You know, and there's, but it's just, it's one of those movies where like it, it left an, it left a mark, you know, and, and after you've watched it, I mean, it, and it, every rewatches, and I say this about a few horror movies, but this one is like, when I revisit it, I'm pretty much right where I was the first time I saw it because it's, it's still, like you said, the practical effects still hold up really well. The casting in this was phenomenal. They did a great job. And I don't know probably as much about it as you, but I do know a lot about the mishaps that happened when they were recording or film excuse me, filming it. And then, um, like, I know that she got seriously hurt when her body was doing this and that mm -hmm. contraption and, yep. you know, stuff like that. And so it, it adds, I think, all of that kind of stuff. I think we talked about a little bit of this maybe with the Omen, or maybe that might have been on a different, maybe we weren't talking about the Omen. But when you learn that kind of stuff, I think it helps you appreciate what you're watching in a different way. But no, The Exorcist is a great movie. It actually used to be, and I'm a huge advocate for remakes and continuations and stuff, but it used to be on one of my pedestals of like, they should never touch this. And then, of what course, happened? they did. And well, um, yeah, but it's a great movie. And I think it's, uh, you know, you hear that music or you see that little scene from the, you know, when he's under the, uh, what do you call it? The lamp, the street lamp. And like, it's just, it's, it's iconic. It's got so many things in it. I would love to, um, I think it's in Washington, DC, right? Yeah. The I would steps. love to check out, yeah, I would love to check out the steps. I so mean, many people I follow on Twitter have been to the steps. Yeah, I, I would love to. I mean, it, it, it's definitely one of those iconic places. I know people would want to see the Rocky steps, 
I would want to see the Exorcist stuff. So <laughs> I would also rather see the Exorcist. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd be right there with you. I yeah, no, it's a great one. Um, your next one definitely has not been on here, and this is one of Angel's will never watch movie list, um, which is uh, the Last House on the Left. And I'm talking about the original one. The remake yeah. is good too, but the I have not one. seen either. Um, so this was right after Gremlins, and I started getting into horror movies. So yeah, back back in the day, you would go to a video store to rent VHS. You know, before blockbuster. Back in the day. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, because does anybody even remember VHS? Everybody knows DVDs. I mean, we have them. No, but... I used to get to go to video stores. That's a bar that's a big part of my horror journey too, is going to the video the store video and just store. getting like random ass yeah. horror. A lot of stuff. the times would be because of the cover. You would read oh, the name, yeah. but I had a great cover. And um I was my I had an older cousin who would rent them for us. So you know we'd go in and I mean the, the guys who ran the place, they weren't gonna question anything. They just wanted to make sure that the older person was the one that rented it. Oh, it wasn't sure. any of the minors. And yeah. this was one of them. Um, this was Wes Craven's first movie. Right. I did know um, that. Yes. Yep. So, you know, ran and directed by him. Um, it was, it's the OG of the rape and revenge genre. Right. Is what, you know, this movie is. Um the thing that is still to at least for me till this day of uh, that's disturbing about it and i covered it on my movies that fucked me up is you know you watch found footage the quality that the movie is shot in is yeah. like you're watching found footage like a home movie like a home movie which gives a very uncomfortable feel to it it's not like you're really watching you you, you are watching a movie but it's just the camera work the quality of the camera it's like you're watching a found footage though it's not because it's obviously a film film but it's just right, right, as, right. as it's aged it's it gives more of that feeling yeah. and um it was when i saw it um it, i was disturbed by it you know um i i'm not I, even though some of the movies i cover have a lot of rape in it i'm not a fan of that in horror movies it's it's yeah. a trope it's a trope if you're going to use, you got to make sure you're, you're using it for a proper way of the story, not because you're just throwing in there for a shock factor. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah. You know, and, and considering like the movie itself took place in the 70s when, you oh, know, yeah. the teenagers were walking around the street asking random people for weed. You know, it was literally how like everybody kind of lived. So it was something that can possibly happen. And any movies that have those feels of like, God, this shit looked real. Yeah. It sticks with you. Um, and you said you didn't see the remake, but um, the parents are actually the ones who inflict the revenge. The revenge. And the mother, uh, Cynthia Carr, in the original one, Monica mm -hmm. Parter did the remake. She was so good in the performance. Um, yeah. You know, some what West asked of, for her to do like i'm sure she must have been like i have to say and do that and then when she did it you know she's like that was a moment of empowerment because they're taking revenge for you know the daughter did survive but they're basically taking out these people who raped and murdered their daughter so it's one of those that a lot of the rape i spit on your grave um yeah I think I know there's been a couple of them, especially recently. There's been a few of them. Um, I haven't seen them yet. But this is where, you know, I Spit on Your Grave and The Last House on the Left were the two that introduced the rape revenge genre in horror. And it's not a favor for everybody. It's not for everybody. Um, yeah. I, 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 if you are a survivor, you know, victim, oh, I sure. don't recommend watching these movies. It's going to be yeah. highly triggering. It's yeah. not, it's, it's not, it's not for the faint, honestly. And it's, uh, but it's on there because this is one of the ones that sparked my, how much further can I go when I watch movies? So yeah. this is the one that started my whole 
journey into what Ruby. movies are yeah. out there that are yeah. I'm gonna go, what the fuck did I just watch? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I haven't um I can't watch movies with that in it unless it's like a closed door scene or it's just disgust. Otherwise I can't, I just can't do it. Um I got up I got up and walked out of The Hills Have Eyes Too because the one in there is is pretty rough too and i hadn't i didn't know this was a remake for the longest time or the not the one you're talking about but i didn't know it had a remake rather um for the longest time and so when it came out i was like oh what's this you know and then like somebody had mentioned it for the remake about the the scene and and what it entails and how long it lasts and i'm like yep gonna skip that one but i didn't know i didn't know that that was a remake of this one i didn't even know this other one existed um in fact, oh, it was the, probably you that told me that probably when we talked about it on another or something else that oh, we that did. The, you, so you thought that you didn't know about the Wes Craven one. You thought no, that, I thought the uh, the remake was the only one. Original, I didn't know. Oh, it was. yeah. No. Yeah. No. But, and they, I, I will say they did a really good job. Um, I liked all the actors in it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you had Aaron Paul, uh, Garrett Dillahunt. Um, damn it. I can't remember the other. Spencer. Treat Logan, I want to say, or something like that. He played the little boy in um, Unbreakable, but yeah. it had a good cast. And Monica Potter, um, I, 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 I did like it, but when you look at it, you can tell it's a studio movie, and that's why I'm saying that with the original one, with yeah. the quality, you feel like you're watching like a snuff film. Like I that's got the, it. that's the ickiness you get from it. Yeah, that makes sense. Um. Yeah, so your fourth one is Sa- Sallow or Sallow. Sallow or 120 Days of Sodom. Yeah, so as I said on my journey to trying to find <laughs> movies. <laughs> um, I got a cough here, hold on. <laughs> yeah, on my journey to find movies, <laughs> I came across this one. And um, so... Sometimes some movies, you know, when you see them, especially from other countries, uh, this is oh. from Italy, uh, written and directed by Pier um, Paolo Pasolini. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you first see it, you're only left with the fuck did I just watch? And you'll watch it a couple other times and you're still trying to get past the what the fuck am I watching right now? Until you start realizing, you know, the director was, the storyline took place back in the 1940s. And it was, basically, he was showing what fascism was like in Italy. And that these people who were in these higher positions, how they would abuse people in the lower positions. Oh, okay. And, yeah, and when I did my video, somebody said I totally missed the part. I did know this, you know, when I do my episodes, I'm only talking about what fucked me up. I don't give like the 411 at everything. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know, and that's not the point of it. I knew that the, as I got older, what the director was trying to, was speaking of, the guy got in trouble for this movie. Oh. You know, oh, yeah. No, there's like, it's one of those, again, um, it was banned in a lot of countries. Um, okay. it, it's, it's definitely not for the faint of heart um, yeah. at all. Like, it's just, you, you, look away a lot of the times it's a it's a hard hard movie to watch and um when uh jr and rick had me come up with a list and i needed to put this one in here Mm -hmm. it honestly had been 20 years since the last time like i i i I saw it a lot more years ago as Mm -hmm. i've gotten older and just realized some stuff you don't need to rewatch again Uh, this landed on the yeah i don't need to see this again like there's there's no enjoyment in this, you know. I, I already know what's gonna go on. Um however, bless you. <laughs> Thanks. <sorry. laughs> um, however, it it's for for those people who look for horror movies that want to push your limits, that want to take you out of that comfort zone, I definitely recommend it. You yeah. Know, it, there's a reason I watched it, it's a reason it's on here. It's again a very very disturbing movie, but you're an author. I mean, so this was somebody's idea. 
It still yeah. was it still was released. And the person actually had a message, even though mm -hmm. it just took years to get past all the gross stuff for you to look see the message. You know, it yeah. just wow, it took a while, kind of like midsummer. You took, you know, midsummer is like 10 watches before you finally fucking get it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't even know what this movie is about. I've never, have I heard of it? Probably. So it's basically you have, and I won't go into a whole, whole lot of detail. You, yeah, have no. these, you have these four people that are part of the, of the government and they go out to this castle and um, there are sections to each one. Um, blood, is it blood. One of them is shit, which is the one I talk about on my episode. <laughs> But each thing is a different one, and they have a different madam that gives this story about something she had done when she herself was a prostitute from a client. All along, they went ahead and went into this town and kidnapped a bunch of young, and I think that the victims were all between 14 and 19, mm -hmm. male and females. Mm -hmm. And then they picked on the males, the ones that were a little bit more on the, you know, endowed became kind of like their military people so these w young people would be mutilated raped shit on <laughs> forced to eat shit it was just a whole lot like it's it's yeah. again it's really a whole lot another one that if you have been a victim or survive rape don't watch it, it it's it, it's it's like it has, it just throws so it, it has everything in there and the kitchen sink as well as the kitchen and then they decided to just drop the whole house on it wow yeah no it's it's a very 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 disturbing movie yeah i don't think i've ever heard of that one before even um well your last one is one of my favorite movies of all time did you know that no i did not yeah <laughs> Um, so as we'll long as it's the original and none of the remakes. If it's any of the remakes, I don't know that I can still be your friend. But um, the so the last one on your list is Black Christmas. So um, before Halloween, there was Black Christmas. Before Laurie Strode, there was Jess Bradford. Jess Bradford. All right. This was released 1972. Mm-hmm. No, 74, because it's 50th, it's its 50th birthday. Oh, yeah, four. Little yeah. brain fart. There's yeah, Black the Black Christmas is seriously one of my favorite movies of all time. It is one of I, my favorite, favorite, favorite movies. I love it. And it created yeah. one of the most like great, like the one of the craziest like horror tropes that's been done multiple times mm -hmm. since then. But it's it's so so good. I love this movie. Well, I mean, so uh, this is the uh, the other one that holds a distinction, which is why. I put it at the end of that. Yeah. I watch it on Halloween and I watch it during Christmas. It's just like gremlins. It so fits both seasons. <laughs> um, yeah. I like the movie just for the movie itself. Mm -hmm. And then as you get older and you start researching these movies, you realize, but you know, mind you, Bob Clark did this one and he got so much heat for it that he went and did a Christmas story after this. <laughs> Oh no, I didn't know that. Or you did not know that? that? Uh -uh. Yes. So he went from Black Christmas to a Christmas story because of the heat that he got. When the movie came out, it was Roe versus Wade. Yes. So the whole reason for the movie, and which is why I wanted to, you know, um beside putting on the list had discussed it, is the importance of what the movie was at the time. And yeah. Fucking here we are 50 years later, again at the time, because, you know, Jess was being, after she realized she was pregnant, mm -hmm. she's now being victimized. She's being victimized by a killer. She's victimized by the police, mm -hmm. you know, at the end, after they drug a pregnant woman to leave her alone and say, well, we've got the killer. They think the job is done. And the phone rings. They basically, the movie just shows you how, you know, a woman has failed. And, you know, I, we talked about it when we were doing um, your, uh, the, the last live, The Purge, the whole, oh. the messages in a movie. Yeah. 
This wasn't all in your face at all. And it's here we are. Ways, yes. yeah. And here we are. That message has still not gone away. And if not, it's even more fucking relevant right now, yeah. which is insane 50 years later. So this movie, you know, and again, Jess was the original final girl. Don't worry, I'm not going to do an Ash was the original final guy on you. <laughs> but, you know, historically speaking, Jess is the... Now, because the movie is Canadian, and it yeah. was released Canadian first, and then it got the U.S. release, Halloween is a U.S. release, and that's how Laurie Strode became the original final girl, or the first right. final girl. It was Jess... You know, sorry, Lori. I love Lori. I mean, obviously, I, I know you do. Halloween. Yeah, and this is awesome, though. It was it was to to because I went back and forth on Black Christmas or Halloween, mm -hmm. and I will die on this that Black Christmas is a better movie than Halloween. For as much as I love Halloween, God, I I love Black Christmas. I watch it every Christmas. I, first of all, I love Christmas horror in general. It's one of my favorite things. Um, but that's it's just such an iconic film. But it's literally horror movie aside, it's it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Mm -hmm. I've I've seen that movie. I'm, I could probably almost quote it line for line. Like it's it's one of my favorites. So we finally did last year and the year before on remakes. We finally covered the remakes because as much of an advocate as I am for them, I refuse to watch the Black Christmas remakes. I was like, I just don't think I can do it. And I hated both of them, but it's one of my, it's because I just have so much love and respect for the original. It was so hard for me to engage with the new ones at all or newer well, ones. That's all that's okay. So the, with the newer one, not the, I actually liked the first remake with Mary Elizabeth Winstead and um, Lacey Shibbert. I thought it had some fun kills, um, mm -hmm. but it wasn't Black Christmas. You were emotionally attached to Jess. Yes. And what she was going through. Everybody. I was attached to everybody. Everyone. But, everybody. but you didn't, you didn't, you didn't get the atta that same attachment with the remake. That's true. You know, and when the, the last remake, it was so woke that it, it was, was too much. too much. It was too much. And you too couldn't, much. you couldn't, connect with any of the, the the female leads you know but again yeah. you go back to the original one you know and just uh, that fucking phone call <laughs> that will never again i think will be replicated the only way you're going to hear that phone call is if you watch the movie i don't think we're ever going to have that much of a dirty call ever done again unless no, you watch it's, a porn. it's flawless no i i agree with that it's so like i mean you're talking about emotionally connected there's there's just moments where you feel all the same things that they're feeling yeah like yeah no i totally agree i love this movie i yeah i totally agree. Yeah, it's good to know that it's your favorite i this is like whew. yeah it's up there it, it's yeah. definitely like i said i i know that when jr and rick see this they're gonna go what He's actually going to say, but John Carpenter <laughs> may have gotten his idea of Halloween <laughs> from Black Christmas. That's all I got to say. And the thing is, Black Christmas was left with, did Jess survive this? Yeah, it's super open-ended. Super. there Because it's the phone call and him laughing as the police are leaving. So and she's, she's just drugged. She can't get out of the bed. Like, how they left the victim so easily to be taken out. It was just, and again, that's why the movie has that impact, you know. So, if you, you know, if you have not realized that this is what the whole movie is about and you rewatch it again, you're going to understand why we love this movie. Yeah, it's so good. It's got so much there. And you're exactly right. This one did it exactly right with the messaging and the points that are there. The first remake didn't really seem to have any of that. It and didn't. then the it was, um, it was slasher fun. 
It was more just, yeah. And it was all the girls from the 2000s that were super popular. It, it, they squeezed it in there with the scream. I know what you did last they did. summer. They yes. They were like, all right, let's throw in the Christmas one All these here. people and get them in. Um, And then, the, like you said, the, the last one, the 2019, I think, or whenever it was, was too much. And I hate it because the main female Imogen, I love her. I think she's great. She was also in the Fright Night remake. Um, I really like her, but I just thought it was just it was too horrible. much. It was horrible. Like, yeah, no, but the, the the Black Christmas is again, and I the best way to do it too. I obviously you can't. You know, I, don't, you, I don't think your son has seen this one yet. No. But when you actually do Black Christmas, and then you watch a Christmas Story right after, because mm -hmm. they're both Bob, Bob Clark movies, so you get. His two totally different sides of Christmas, even though Christmas Story is kind of a little bit horror with, you know, the bullying and all the stuff that yeah. the, the kids go through. Um, yeah. But it, it sounds weird to pair them together, but because I knew that he directed both of them and you get these two different sides of it. That's is... crazy. I did not realize I've n I did not. I did not put that together. That's insane to me. It's freaking it, it, like I said, it's you, when I found out, I'm like, what? And I looked this up and I'm like, holy shit. And it all had to do because of the crap that he got out of a brilliant movie that still holds true 50 years later. Yeah, that's crazy. Crazy. Well, that's, yeah, that's cool. Cause like, I think, like I said, I think three of these five haven't been on here before. So Gremlins, The Exorcist, Last House on the Left, Solo or 120 Days of Sodom and Black Christmas. Those are the movies that made me my horror fan. <laughs> no, that's not good. I'm glad we were able to finally do this. Like you said, we've done, I've done everybody else's. <laughs> I did JR's and Rick's like forever ago. I know. And like we we talked about it and I started laughing. I'm like, I'm the last one. I'm like, I'm, and, <laughs> well, and I guess you didn't, because you didn't realize that I can actually record on Saturdays. Until I did Friday. not. I thought the only days you could record, you were already spoken for with stuff for horror fans. No, I mean, my husband's already in bed. He goes to bed. At, it, that's why I told him. I'm like, I'm recording at Angel. I'm like, at seven. He goes, at seven? I'm like, she's got to do something after. And then when you message me, I'm like, okay, it's going to be at nine. He's like, at nine? I'm like, you're going to be in bed. And he's like, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'm like, you have to, you know, I'm like, we can watch a movie, which we watch Bay of Blood. By the way, if, are you, do you like slashers? Uh, I can't, so yes and no, it depends. So no, actually, with my first time watching it and I did a little research on it, it's basically like the godfather of slasher movies. I've never heard of it. Interesting. Yeah. Mario Baba, a Bay of, a Bay of Blood. Oh, I'll have to check it out. Um, Adam actually watched it and was just like, he's like, you know, because it's, it's older. He's like, but there's the twists were really good. Oh, I'll have to check it out. Yeah, I haven't seen that one. I'm maybe I'll add it to my list for first watches in October. I try to watch new stuff, not new, what? new. You know what I mean? New old stuff. Yeah, yeah. In <laughs> in um in October, but yeah. Well, cool. Well, um. That is going to wrap up this episode of Influential Horror, I think. Um, all of Joe's links, once again, where to find him and Horror Fan TV are going to be in the description for this episode. Um, and I'm always looking for new guests. So if you're watching this and you're interested in being on, just comment or DM me. I'm happy to have new people on any time. Um, this is like the first series I ever did for the channel. So it's kind of like my baby. Oh, well, I'm glad I got to join finally. Thank you. Me Sorry, too. it took so long. Maybe I was just holding Tuesday. out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, Being a little bit diva, no, <laughs> just a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us on this episode of Influential Horror. Uh, we hope you have a good rest of your week. Enjoy your weekend, and we will see you in the next one. <laughs>